All right, good morning. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Wednesday in December. This is One Million Cups. We meet nearly every Wednesday at 9 a.m. And people like you all around the nation are meeting in their respective cities. We're in over 73 cities currently and expanding. Uh, let's see. Next week, we will have a presentation, but the last two Wednesdays of December, the 23rd and the 30th, TCC will be closed and we will not have any presentations. That's on our newsletter. If you're not on our newsletter, please get on our newsletter. You can join our newsletter by emailing us at tulsa at onemillioncups.com. Today is a very exciting day. We have four organizations. We have The Forge. 36 Degrees North, The Bridge, and ITE, all coming out to tell us about the amazing things they're doing in Tulsa for entrepreneurship, what they've done in the past year, and hopefully some things that we can look forward to in the next year. So please welcome Jessica Flint, the director of The Forge, as she comes to tell us about what's going on. Clap, 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 clap. clap. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Um, it's almost Christmas. Are you guys excited? Maybe, OK. I'm excited. Okay, my name is Jessica Flint. I'm director of The Forge, um, which is a startup incubator that's an economic development initiative of the Tulsa Regional Chamber. Um, so, the Tulsa Regional Chamber, we are an organization that is all about driving regional economic prosperity. So what that means is attracting jobs, retaining jobs, finding new employers to either expand or relocate to Tulsa, um, really supporting our existing small business and large employers, creating a sense of place uh, for young people through Tulsa's Young Professionals, Sports Commission, Visit Tulsa, all of that, so um, we do quite a bit, and the Forge is a component of that. We are the entrepreneurship aspect of the Forge's, or the Tulsa Regional Chamber's entrepreneurship effort. So I'm here to share a little bit about the Forge. You may have heard about the Forge, um, that we're an incubator in Tulsa. We're located in the heart of downtown at 3rd and Cheyenne, so real close to the BOK Center, if you're not familiar with where our space is located. We started um, several years ago through Tulsa's Young Professionals Organization. Their business development crew um, was seeing incubators pop up across the nation and thought this is a great way to really engage our local uh, startups that maybe feel alone, they're working out of a space, they don't have that kind of support um, in the community. And so we were one of the, the first spaces that popped up to support uh, local entrepreneurs and at that time specifically um, young entrepreneurs. And so we partnered with, um, we'll go back there, uh, we partnered with TEDC Creative Capital to gain an economic development grant for, it was a matching grant for $600,000, so it was a $1.2 million grant um, to outfit our current space at 3rd and Cheyenne. So it's a really great space, very modern vibe, um, very well designed. So we're grateful for that partnership and for that grant to make it possible. Um, so what we do at the most basic level, we provide space. So we're office space and we have six office spaces. I have a space there as well, so including mine. We've got seven uh, small office spaces at the Forge that fit two to three people. And we provide really, really low cost space. And we're able to do that because of our grant. We don't really have those that space cost um, for ourselves. Basically just utilities that we have to cover. So we're able to provide these spaces for 275 to 475 a month, including their utilities in addition to all of the extra benefits that they get um, with locating at the space. And so what we do is we provide space for people, uh, startups to work together and have that kind of uh, integrated energy, but also we have the, the services that we provide as well. And so when a company comes on board at The Forge, we immediately start out with something that's called Growth Wheel. And it's basically a 360 view and screening of their business and finding out where their weak areas are as far as their personal skill set. And so based on that, we uh, send them through this Forge 6 process, which is basically six meetings with our mentors. And we have, uh, and I'm going fast here because I just have five minutes, but we have a program that's uh, called the Bullpen. And it's 50 professionals and experts that have agreed to give a minimum 
um, or a maximum hour per month to our tenant companies. And so that's accountants, attorneys, financial people, um, you know, tax experts. So really anything that you could think of, we have these experts on this program, which has been really tremendous for our, our companies. Um, because we are part of the chamber, we have a lot of industry connections. And so if someone needs to, if one of our companies needs to meet with a CEO or some high level person in a certain industry, uh, chances are that the chamber has some personal relationship somewhere. And so that proves as extremely helpful for these companies to get in, in, in their industry and to test their products and services. Um, through this state, we have an income tax exemption. So state incubators receive, um, their tenant companies receive a state income tax exemption for up to five years, whether they're in the incubator or not, and up to 10 years if they make 75% or more of their sales outside of the state. So that's a tremendous benefit that follows the company for up to 10 years, even after graduating the forge. And typically, uh, the companies are in the forge for one to two years. We have had a company at the forge for three years because they were in beta testing and getting funding. So sometimes it takes longer, but generally one to two years is the time frame. Uh, we do education and networking. When Tulsa is getting recognition for entrepreneurship, we, media comes to the forge and our tenants get PR. So that's another benefit. And also with entrepreneurs working out of a home space or a coffee shop, they don't have a professional meeting space or conference room to meet at. So that's an, a benefit as well for being in this space. Here's some of our tenants. So we really focus on companies that are scalable, that can grow, um, that have some sort of innovative idea. We, like, for example, one of our uh, kind of non-traditional tenants would be Cultural Outreach Solutions, and they do consulting in the mortgage industry, but they they had an innovative spin on it. So it just depends. Um, we're not strictly limited to tech companies or companies that are in the manufacturing space. We look at each company and individual on a case-by-case -case basis, and if it's innovative and scalable, then that's a kind of company that we're looking for. Um, a few success stories, Switch Gear is one of them. They were recently listed on the Inc. 5000, a fastest growing women-led companies. They were growing at a 1,000 percent rate, and so they're growing super fast, very successful company that graduated from the Forge several years back. Skater Trainer, they, uh, it's a mechanical, he is a mechanical engineer that developed these wheels that pop onto skateboards, and it helps kids learn tricks without the board flipping out from underneath them. They recently did an Indiegogo campaign and went way above their goal of 15,000 and raised over $50,000 on Indiegogo, so that was a huge success. Our goal is really to be, again, as an economic development initiative, an economic driver. And so we can already see that just in the past couple of years, our tenants are creating an economic impact in the community. And so I was asked to tell what's next. I don't know how much time do I have now, 30 seconds. Well, I just thought this was cute. I have no idea what's going to happen, and I love it. Well, the, the nature of the Forge is we don't know what companies are going to come in next. We, you know, we don't know until they apply, and then when they're at the Forge, we never know if they're going to pivot or how, how they're going to succeed, and it's always in different ways. And so it's a really exciting thing to be a part of. But really, we do know what's next. It's lots of awesome. Um, we are getting an espresso machine at the Forge before the end of the year, so I'm excited about that. And so are our tenants. Um, we do have some new um, programming that is currently under works. Um, we have some companies that are growing and may be graduating the space early next year. So we'll be graduating, bringing in new companies. It's kind of an ongoing process. And so if you're interested in the Forge, feel free to visit our website and apply. Um, although our space is limited, we are always accepting applications and doing interviews to keep a list of, of potential um, tenants at the Forge. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to open it up to just two or three questions since we do have some other presenters to hear from. So if you have a question for Jessica, please raise your hand and we'll have someone bring you a microphone so you can ask it. We are recording, so please raise your hand so you can get a mic. Any questions? Question here in the back. Hello, you were talking about the tax benefits to the forge. I couldn't, I, I'm almost sure I missed it. Was that sales tax or uh, income tax that's, that is way for five years? It's, it's income tax. And it's a benefit through the Oklahoma Department of Commerce that kind of certifies and takes care of that. Another question over here. Rebecca. Hey Jess, I'll ask a question. Uh, what do you feel like 
Okay, let me take a step back. With all of the co-working spaces and other incubators, the bridge, 36 degrees, all sorts of things popping up, what do you feel like the Forge is uniquely positioned to provide? That is a great question. And we actually recently developed this beautiful infographic of how the, the Forge and 36 Degrees North and other spaces complement each other. So I think the main difference and specialty of the Forge is that we're very selective. So we only have six spaces, which allows us to really focus on the companies one-on-one. -on -one. They do have term limits, so it's not an ongoing, you know, you have a space, you can have it forever. Um, and, and that's great for what some people need. Um, but for the Forge, we're, we're focusing on Incubation, which means you know six companies at a time, one to two years that they get, and we're really focusing one on one. Whereas co-working is a more open model where anyone can come um, and have unlimited membership. All right, we can take one more question. No further questions. Okay, then we're going to move on to Dustin. Please give a round of applause for Jessica for that wonderful presentation. If you'd like to get with her afterwards, seek her out. So our next presenter, uh, a bit of a local entrepreneurship celebrity, although he wouldn't say so himself, his beard is famous. Please give him a round of applause for Dustin with 36 Degrees North. Okay. All right. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, celebrity is weird. I'm not a celebrity. Um, Although I have a great beard, I like to think I do. Um, so 36 Degrees North um, is um, a sister organization to The Forge. Um, we're a nonprofit um, entrepreneurship hub that is opening in January in the Brady Arts District. Um, I put the clicker in my pocket and I needed to keep it out. So uh, this is what our building will look like. It's the Universal Ford building um, at the intersection of Maine and Cameron, so one block north of the tavern across the street from Chimera, Antoinette's Bakery which is amazing if you haven't been there. Um, so it was the Model T dealership back in the 20s. Um, and so uh, the George Kaiser Family Foundation, Lobeck Taylor Family Foundation, the Chamber, and Tulsa Tech all came together and said, hey, let's build an awesome building. So uh, the Kaiser Foundation is primarily the developer of the building. It's going to have a uh, prairie artisanal brew pub on the front side here, which is going to be sweet. And then apartments upstairs. And then our space is about 11,500 square feet on the downstairs in the back half of the building. Um, so uh, we'll have a desk area that the desks will not look like that. We've got different desks. Um, but you can see up here on, kind of the right-hand side is the original freight elevator of the building that they would drive Model Ts on it, and then they'd storm up on the roof. And we're turning that into a booth. It's part of the historic uh, renovation of the building, which will be cool. Um, this will be our event space uh, where we can have events like One Million Cups, uh, Tulsa Web Devs, um, different events that are open to the community, as well as a monthly speaker series where we bring in speakers from all over the country. Um, we're actually bringing in a guy from uh, 500 Startups, which is an incubator in the Bay Area that's going to come in uh, in March and spend a week with us. Uh, and then we have a co-working area, uh, very coffee shop-esque, um, where if you need a place to work and just drop in in between meetings, you can come and use that space. Um, yes. Moving on. So uh, here's the layout of our space. You can see we've got the co-working and event space at the top half of it. We have six conference rooms that kind of various um, sizes and uses from presentations to brainstorming to video conferencing, things like that. We have a classroom for workshops. We're partnering with SCORE, REI, uh, TEDC, The Forge. We have um, about 40 partner organizations, um, really, that we're just wanting to offer our, our space as a resource for the entrepreneurial community. So for events that are going on, a place where someone can just walk in the front door. Uh, uh, before 36 Degrees North, I had a startup, and I had this problem where I just didn't know where to go. I just didn't know what to do next. Um, and so that's really what we want to be. Um, whereas um, the Forge is a very kind of focused on their companies and how to make them successful. We are kind of an evangelist for entrepreneurship uh, in Tulsa. We're a kind of that outward focused um, place where someone can walk in the front door. We can say, oh, you know what? You should talk to I2E, or you should talk to OSU, or you should. So us knowing the landscape and be able to point people in the right direction. Um, and then if people need a place to work, we have that as well. So everything that's in yellow um, is either, um, you can see we've got 10 offices, 
three of them are going to be for partner organizations like OSU. We'll have two faculty members full time in our space that will be there to advise. Um, and then we have 48 dedicated desks where people can bring your, you know, if you're a freelance designer, developer, you've been working at home, you're sick of that, you can come and work. So the three things we say we do are community, resources, and workspace. Uh, I'd say above and beyond, like, the number one thing we do is the community. Um, of our 70-ish members that have signed up so far, um, the number one pe thing people say they're looking for is just to be around other people. They're sick of working at home, they're tired of being alone. Entrepreneurship can be kind of a lonely experience. Um, so entrepreneurs, technologists, designers, mentors, we wanna have a diverse set of people working from our space, whether it's food, software, manufacturing, nonprofits, whatever, we, we have all of those. Um, resources, so like I said, we have our 40 partner organizations. Um, we'll have, um, we've set a goal for ourselves of hosting 500 events our first year, um, which is gonna be intense, uh, but basically that averages to two per weekday. Um, so twice a week we'll have workshops. We're working with our partner organizations to put those on. Um, so there'll be basically a range of, no matter what stage your company is in, there's a workshop going on at least w once a quarter that's aimed at you, whether it's accounting, marketing, um, global expansion, whatever that is. Um, plus our speaker series, plus our meetups. Um, we also have some cl classes like OK Coders. Tulsa Tech is gonna do a boot camp uh, out of our space. Uh, a lot of different things. Uh, and then the workspace I is another piece of it. So co-working, uh, which is, uh, there we have a co-working membership that's, I think I have a slide for this. Yeah, $99 a month. Um, it's actually $149 a month, but we're doing a special where people who sign up before we open can get it for $99 a month. That uh, gets you access to our space anytime we're open, printing, coffee, Wi-Fi, you can book reserve conference rooms, you can come to any of our events for free, uh, any of those things. If you don't need uh, that, if you're, you know, that's really best if you're gonna come at least a couple times a week. Um, we also have day passes, we're 20 bucks a day. You can just drop in, use the Wi-Fi. If you just need a place to work for the day, get out of, get out of the place, uh, get out of your house. Um, and then you can add to your co-working membership. So a dedicated desk is two forty-nine a month. So really what our goal is to have a stair-step uh, approach where as your company grows, as your needs grow, you can um, add to what you, you have. Um, and then eventually the idea is that you grow and move out and go into the forge um, or go wherever, get your own office space. So we, ho we hope to have a pretty fast turnover for our offices and for our um, dedicated desks um, because we want people to grow and move out. So. Um, our goal is not to replicate anything else that's going on in the community, to replicate the bridge or the forge or the workshop or any of these organizations, but really just to be, like I said, an evangelist for the community. We're set kind of with our, our backing and our support of the foundations in these organizations that we're gonna do a lot of marketing and promotion, not only within Tulsa to connect um, resources, but also outside of Tulsa, being able to say, hey, look at Tulsa, what's going on here, and getting people to move here and be here. Okay, I think that's it. Pa paid for it, so I gotta put their logos up there, so. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and we will bring a microphone to you. Just raise your hand and we can get some few questions for Dustin. Yeah. Oh, sorry, they're supposed to bring the microphone to you. I'm, I'm, I called on you too early. <laughs> Amateur mistake, I'm This sorry. is awesome how it's coming together because I've seen, you know, this has been part of your heart. Um, is there a day that we can just go tour? Yeah, so, um, so it's under construction right now, um, but I would be happy to give tours. Um, uh, you just need a hard hat, which I'll, I'll bring the hard hat. So come find me afterwards and I, I can give you a tour anytime. Um, so we are, construction will be done at the end of this month. Um, we will start onboarding all of our members early in January. So if you're a member and you've signed up, you're gonna get an email soon, I promise. Um, and I just ordered t-shirts, and that'll be exciting. Um, and then January 25th um, I th is what we're shooting for is our public opening. So that'll be like a free co-working day. Anybody can come, and we just want people to come check it out. So, but if you want to tour before then, email me, and we'll make that happen. Yeah, let me be the first one to say that is really sweet. So, um, I agree, thank you. <laughs> what is the, uh, so right now, we, Austin, San Diego, those are all really big hubs. Is the vision five years from now, what is the vision five years from now? Is it to be another, like, a technology hub here in Tulsa? Yeah, so we've, we've kind of traveled all over the country looking at different models. Um, there's a, a group of about a dozen 
um, hubs, I guess, around the country that are kind of at this top level, Austin, or Capital Factory in Austin, 1776 in DC, 1871, people love numbers, um, in Chicago. And our goal is to be at that level, to be known nationally and internationally at that level as a hub for entrepreneurship. Um, we very intentionally not been, call ourselves a tech hub. Um, uh, it's a, a big chunk of our membership, but it's definitely not all of our membership because we think that we have kind of a unique opportunity in, in Tulsa to do be broader and have diverse people sitting next to each other. Um, and actually we've committed to um, uh, providing resources and opportunities for underserved entrepreneurs and specifically mompreneurs. Um, so we um, are doing like a once a month co-working day for moms where we will actually provide childcare. Um, you can bring your kids, drop them off. Um, we'll have workshops. You can be around other moms who are doing, doing being a mom and being an entrepreneur. Um, so that's one of the exciting things we're doing. Um, our, our goal would also be to um, to have this grow um, in that we've seen the model that when a, a hub like 36 degrees north enters a city, within a few years there are four or five other co-working spaces that pop up around, around the, the city and that's a good thing because then it, it provides these neighborhood entities and these other things that can help meet people's needs. Any other questions? Any further questions? You're supposed to raise your hand and say, how do I sign up right now? You can go to our website. I think it's the next slide. Dustin, I'll just ask can the you question. tell us a little bit about the coffee? Who's providing it? Um, I'm going to hand roast all the beans now. Um, we are partnering with Chimera, who's just across the street from us, and they're going to bring over fresh coffee every day, um, which I just got the budget for, and it's kind of scary. It's a lot of coffee. Um, but it's going to be great coffee, and we won't do lattes or anything like that. We're not, some of the spaces around the country, they open their own coffee shop internally, and we didn't want to do that since we've got, obviously, Chimera and Antoinette's right by. So. We want people to go support those entrepreneurs. So, and we have beer, and we are we are going to have a kegerator um, in our space. So, if anyone has tips on ordering kegerators, I'm looking for one right now. So. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Dustin. <laughs> With the bridge, a new co-working space. So, if you haven't heard about this, it's going to be really exciting. So. Please give a round of applause for Daniel. Thank you for so much for coming out. Thank you. Yes, I'm Daniel Blejo. I'm the managing director for The Bridge Coworking. Uh, just to start off, I'll give you guys just a little bit. Which button do I press here? There we go. Got it. I uh, just give you guys, uh, just to start off, I'll give, you, give just a little bit of a story of how we came to be and uh, um, what we're doing now. So, oh yeah, sorry. Um, so we, um, we started planning the bridge in January of this year, but uh, really it was an idea that I've had for a, a long time that I've been passionate about. Um, I wanted to, the idea was simple. I just wanted to create a space that's a cool space for entrepreneurs and uh, freelancers to come and work. Uh, so I went to a client of mine who owns the office building that he's in. Uh, he co-owns it with his business partner and um, pitched the idea to him, and he was immediately on board and loved it. So him and his business partner funded it. Uh, we were underway planning and uh, got going and started, constru started construction. What is co-working? I actually get asked this question probably more than any other. Um, probably most of you in this room have, have, probably have a pretty strong idea of, of what it is, especially uh, now. Uh, but the concept is rapidly growing across the, across the country and especially across the world. Um, and as you can see here today, it has made its way to T-Town. Um, the reason for it being is that the self-employed um, uh, population is growing. Um, a study done by the tech giant uh, Intuit said that by 2020, 40% of the working population would be contingent workers, which includes uh, the self-employed contractors and uh, freelancers. So affordable space is going to be uh, more of a commodity that people will be looking for. And to Dustin's point, more and more places like the bridge will be popping up around Tulsa. Um, our actual space is a 2,500 square foot facility. Um, we put um, a lot of painstaking hours into designing this place uh, because it's not large, but it's also not small. So we needed to make sure we packed in as much into it as possible. So we have four meeting spaces. Uh, we have uh, more formal boardroom, uh, more casual meeting room, 
Uh, we have a training facility that's got modular tables. It's very, um, it's kind of our utility room, and all of those have AV equipment in them. And then we also have, um, and then we also have what people call, or what we call the strategy room, which is basically just whiteboards, 360 around the room. It's, makes for a really fun brainstorming room. Everybody can just write on the table or get up behind them and write on the walls. It's every, well, always everybody's favorite. So in addition to that, of course, we have coffee service and vending and uh, kitchenette, um, all the uh, utilities that you could want out of a co-working space. Um, our pricing is, uh, ranges from $20 a day for anybody who wants to just come in, pop in for the day. Um, includes everything that you can get in the space and the meeting rooms. And then we have a permanent uh, space, or we have the permanent members that would be $200 a month. Um, and that includes a permanent desk location if they wanted to, so they can bring in whatever they need to into the space uh, and really make it their home. Um, so why do we do what we do? Uh, really what we, what we were setting out to do uh, with the bridge was kind of offer a midway point between an incubator and a co-working space. You know, we're really focused on building a hands-on, close-knit community that uh, can really help each other succeed. Um, we're really focused on education. We'll commonly bring in um, in-house mentors and guest speakers and really try and help our members grow uh, their skills and their professional network. Um, in addition to the um, education in the community, of course, community uh, collaboration and community STEM creativity, and we really want to make our space really creative forward. Um, we're finding that our member base, as it grows, is a little is also techie, but it's really creative individuals. We've got a lot of designers that are interested in the space, and that are co we're seeing come out more and more. So I rushed through that really quick because I know we've got one more, but um, I guess I will take questions now. Okay, question right here. Out of all the resources that you provide as the bridge, what do you think is the most valuable to entrepreneurs? Good question. Um, we, f we firmly believe that it's the education aspect. I mean, take what happens here every week. For, um, for an example, I think education is a really important part of the entrepreneur entrepreneurial experience, and that's something we really want to bring to the forefront. A question here in the front. Actually, could you speak a little bit about your decision to have it in South Tulsa and the reception you've got? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whenever I tell people that we're at 51st and Lewis, they go, what? Why, why aren't you downtown with all the cool people, right? Uh, no, it was very uh, deliberate um, that I went to um, Gary Crouch, the owner of the building. Uh, was just a little background on Gary. He's an awesome guy to work with. He bought his first company at 25. He's been an entrepreneur his whole life, and we're really lucky to work with him. But um, it was very deliberate. You know, it's the population center of Tulsa. We're right between South Tulsa and Midtown, just right off of I-44, so it's very accessible. Um, you know, plenty of, it's very easy to get to is basically the reasoning behind that. And we found that that's been a valuable thing for the members. Any more questions? Surely there's gotta be a question in this room somewhere. All right. I saw on the uh, premium membership where you get 24 hour access. Is there, uh, is there somebody on staff 24 hours or is it just like a, like a key card and then the cameras are watching us all the time or something like that? Yeah, so there are security cameras that monitor the space. There will not be a permanent member there or th there will not be a employee there after hours. Uh, but there is an application process in order to become a full-time member uh, just because we want to make sure that we're not uh, opening up our space to anything bad and having any kind of incident. We're really, self we're really conscious about that. You said you've been open since October? We have, yeah. So it was, a, it was a quick turnaround. We started planning it in January um, and then opened up in October. We gutted the office space that we're in and started from there. And um, uh, it was a busy year, to say the least, yeah. 
So my question is, um, how is the community receiving your space so far? Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to grow organically, so we didn't put a lot out there before we opened. We, uh, we, started, we started advertising in the summer, uh, just letting people know that we were coming. Um, it has been slow, but that's also kind of what we were wanting. We want, uh, because, because of that close-knit community that we're trying to build, we didn't want to force anything. So we really want it to just kind of evolve by itself. Any further questions? Oh, the one right here. If someone were to walk in your door this morning at 11.15 and say, I need a, I need a workspace, would it be available? Absolutely. So they would just take a spot, and we've got a nice little online thing. As soon as they try to log on to the Wi-Fi, it takes their information. It's all very integrated, and they be they would be co-working in five minutes if they needed to. So you guys have been open six oct October, and you're slowly building the community. Um, at 2,500 square feet, how many spaces do you have, and how how do you foresee that filling up? Is it, you know? next few months it's going to be uh, application only and wait for somebody to leave or, you know? No, it's, uh, so we actually have that, um, back it up to just show the picture of it. So you can see we have these, um, op these permanent seating desks over here um, which hold 20 members. And right now we're at about 10 members, but of course nobody's there every single day sometimes. And, um, and then you can't see it, but just on the other side of this wall we have another long 14-foot table that say if all those spaces were filled up with the 20, we could put another 10 there that are just coming into co-work or check out the space or hang out or have a meeting, have a quick meeting. I'm sorry, now I'm confused that you put up a picture. Now that we have a picture, it looks like there's four chairs to a desk. So what you're saying is a dedicated desk is shared with three other people. So if you got people on the phone, then we have crosstalk. I'm just asking. Oh yeah, space to, um, to help promote people collaborating and talking and helping each other. Be <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's actually good because now it sounds like you have a very busy office. So when you're calling people, it sounds like you got action happening. So that's actually kind of cool. My other concern is the Wi-Fi. Um, it did say super fast. Now, okay, so for whatever reason, I don't particularly care much for Wi-Fi, and that has to do with radiation and all that other good stuff. We're being bombarded by stuff on a regular basis. Um, when you say super fast Wi-Fi, what exactly does that mean? Uh, that's 200 megabytes a second Wi-Fi, and then for our permanent members, they have the option to plug into the Ethernet, which is up to gigabits. Ooh, thank you. You're welcome. All right, we've got time for one more question. So, anybody? All right, run. Most of the other incubator spaces here in town are actually funded by some foundation or something, so they're not 100% geared toward having to be a profitable right off the bat. If you're privately funded, what's your revenue model and how do you see this turning into something that's going to produce enough revenue to keep the doors open? That's a good question. Um, so really, the way it, it came down to, you know, butts in the seats. How many people can we fit in here and how many people do we expect to be in here? and how long do we have to do it? So we've got time limits and I've got a number in my head and we do have, a, um, even growing it organically, we believe that we'll hit that um, model number of members. All right, excellent. Thank you so much, Daniel, for coming out to present. Thank Go you. to the website, get involved. Okay, uh, our next presenter is I2E, although we did not announce it. They are going to tell us about some awesome things I2E's done this year. Oh, we're going to theirs. Uh, so please welcome Stacy with I2E. <laughs> if you don't know her, you should. Thank you, good morning. Uh, my name's Stacy Brandhorst. I'm a venture advisor at I2E, which stands for Innovation to Enterprise. James Lovely is also a venture advisor and he's gonna be helping me field the hundreds of questions that you guys are going to flood us with afterwards. Um, so we're talking a little bit about uh, the Venture Assessment Program, which is just a slice of what I2E does. Um, 
In a very, very small nutshell, I2E provides advisory services in seed capital to scalable Oklahoma businesses. So um, you've probably seen us at a lot of entrepreneurial events. We like to work very closely with the Forge, and we're going to be giving some classes at 36 Degrees North and look forward to hanging out at the bridge as well. So um, hopefully you've seen us in other capacities here in Tulsa. Our headquarters is in Oklahoma City, uh, so that's where our CEO and, and a lot of other VAs are. So um, a requirement for our companies, though, besides being scalable, is that they have to be 51% Oklahoma-owned. So this is purely an Oklahoma initiative. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is our venture assessment program. So sometimes uh, what I2E does and how people go from talking to I2E to getting money from I2E is kind of a mystery. So we tried to uh, align that process with some um, bubble characters to make it easier to understand. <laughs> so first we do client qualification. Do you fit I2E's portfolio? Are you Oklahoma owned? Are you scalable? Uh, a lot of our companies are tech, pharmaceuticals. Uh, we're getting away from saying high tech, high growth because that's not necessarily all we do. Um, but again, so we go through the client qualification. We have an initial meeting. You're assigned to a venture advisor, a VA like James or I. Um, we make an intake decision if you fit the I2E profile and if we think it'd be good to bring you on. Uh, we help you validate the concept of it, um, checking out the product market fit, things like that. We go into planning and advisory services, and then the uh, investment decision, right? So we're at a yes or a no. Again, I'm going through this super fast. This process takes months, but um, yes or no investment decision. And then we help perfect your pitch so that you can pitch to our angel investors. So we have groups of Oklahoma angels that go in. Um, Oklahoma, uh, I2E's money comes from both the state of Oklahoma and OCAST. And um, so we match any dollar that we give with a private dollar. So if the investment's for half a million, we would do 250. And then the angels or private investor would do the other 250. So not a lot of people know that about us. Um, so again, pitch prep, funding, and then we do post-investment monitoring. So I2E is a passive investor. We're not in your business saying, what time did you get to the office today? Or what do you plan to do tomorrow? Um, we try to uh, be there for advisory services, but we're not as hands-on as maybe some other investors may be. So I2E got to a point where we said a lot of our companies in our portfolio are getting past the intake decision and pass the planning and advisory and they get to funding and we realize that we don't know enough about the business to make the decision and that's where the VAP came in the venture assessment program which is designed to investigate the product market fit and business opportunity of an innovative product or concept so I'm actually I don't want to use the word professor, the instructor of the VAP I teach it in both Oklahoma City and Tulsa and it's a program that we use before the intake decision to see if this company not only has a business, but fits well with us and has a plan for growth. So um, some things we talk about in the venture assessment program, first and foremost, customer discovery. Who's going to be your first sale? Who's going to be your next sale? Really in-depth look into the customer. Uh, we do lots of customer interviews. We do one-on-one -on -one calls, uh, market identification. We talk about distribution channels, value proposition, lots of metrics, leveraging your network and competitive analysis, um, along with the class, and I'll talk about that in the class structure. So it's a three-part class. It's really short, three sessions of an hour and a half each. Um, but you get a one-on-one -on -one call each week with myself and our sales executive in residence, Catherine Brown, of Initial Call. I'm sure some of you have met her. So not only are we working on your business in a small group setting, we accept about five companies per class, but you're also getting a one-on-one -on -one call every week with just myself and Catherine drilling down into your business, finding the holes. We always say, you know, let's make sure this boat is steady before we set it out on the ocean. So it's really us beating up on the business, you answering it, us helping you fill those holes in the boat, and then preparing you to become a better I2E client. Um, there is an enrollment cost of $375, but that comes out of the I2E client fee should you become a client. So the I2E client fee is $2,000, so we subtract that. Um, our targets, who would be a good fit for the VAP class? Um, you have to have a prototype or a real product. This isn't to vet an idea. Um, there's lots of other services for that, and we would be happy to point you to some of those. 
Um, startups needing insight in market uh, into market identification and channel strategy. So if you've got the product but you're not exactly sure how you're going to get it to market or who's going to buy it or you think you know but it hasn't been working so you're about to pivot your customer. Um, existing companies who are considering a pivot, that's again, uh, as I mentioned, we have lots of companies that are in revenue that maybe come back to the VAP because they're about to launch uh, a, n a new product line or anything. You don't have to be strictly a startup. And then growth-oriented and scalable ventures. So the outcomes for the company, you get an individualized evaluation of your business opportunity by uh, not only myself, I'm not the only expert, these um, go through our entire company. So the reviews that I write, you get a customized report at the end of the class. Those go through our CEO, those go through our round table, which is kind of Shark Tank-esque. We call it Dolphin Tank, not as aggressive. <laughs> um, written assessment and next steps, so what we think should be the next steps for your venture and how you could go forward with I2E. Uh, I will say not all of the classes through the VAP, that go through the VAP go on to become clients, and that's the point. We're vetting the business so that we can get the strongest clients, so that we can get the strongest deals in front of our angels. Um, recommendation and, and resources, of course. For us, we get the steps for commercialization, insight into your venture. We get to learn a lot about the entrepreneur, whether or not they're coachable, whether or not they um, understand their business. Um, a de-risked business concept, and again, a path forward with I2E. So, the team is myself, Stacey Brandhorst, and uh, Darcy Wilborn in Oklahoma City is our intake director. So um, if I ha we can answer any questions, James and um, Tom and Cornell, they're all here as well. Um, so our next class begins January 21st, and then we're planning on running them every other month after that. So if you apply now and you don't get into the January class, you may roll into the March class or another class. So we keep our applications rolling, so but keep the class sizes small. So um, you can apply online at i2e.org, and I'll open up for questions. Thanks. All right, question in the back. Uh, yeah, I might have phased out, and you may have mentioned this, but what, what's the uh, ROI for i2e beyond the cost to, to join? Is there a piece of the ongoing business beyond the angel investor, or what's the formula for your return on the investment in us? Sure. So, um, do you want to take that one? Or I can help. I was just going to ask about oh, the, you probably need uh, the VAP is a, um, a way that we're, we're vetting future equity investment, or, well, future investment in the business. So, upon exit, everybody gets a, you know, gets a piece of the, the business. So, so this isn't, if that answers the question, it's not, we don't take any part of your business for going through the VAP. We, we don't have any equity stake in this at all. The, those discussions come in months later when we're at the funding decision. Just the front load of due diligence. Mm -hmm. So, question for you. So, after they go through this VAP process, <laughs> after, after, after they're vaped, uh -huh. <laughs> um, Good. What That's happens good. after the funding occurs? So do you come back in and still provide those counseling role, roles to them after, after it happens? Is, it, is the VAP an ongoing thing even after the angel funding occurs? Sure. So the VAP is not an ongoing thing. It's, an, it's, an on, it's the, like James said, front due diligence there. The advisory services are part of what I2E has always offered. This is just a quick way to vet a, a concept and get it into our pipeline. And then once you're in our pipeline, our advisory services, open door policy, we're meeting with you, you turn in your financials all the time, we talk to you all the time. So you get the same kind of, I would say even more one-on-one -on -one attention after funding is given than in the VAP. If you were to put a clock on, on, on your process, from the time a person walks in your door the first time until they can actually expect to have their doors open and have their first sale, how much time could you anticipate it taking? Oh my gosh, 
There's no way to tell. <laughs> There's all kinds of businesses. We have businesses that have been in our client portfolio, which means they've paid the fee, they've come on, they've taken advisory services from us, but have never gotten any funding from us. And that could either be on their end that um, that they haven't distrib or convinced us enough of the scalability. Uh, we've had others come in. And we say we want to fund you as quickly as possible. Let's knock this thing out in three months. So. Um, to first sale, some of our companies that come through the VAP are already in sales. So, um, again, there, it, we take in such a variety that there's no metric on that. I'm sorry, that's a bad answer. But it's the truth. Other than being able to prove your status as an accredited investor, how do you guys select the angel investors and are you looking for others? Always looking for angel investors. Uh, our, you can learn more about our angel fund. Uh, it's called the Seed Step Angels. It's the largest one in Oklahoma. So yes, accredited investor. There's uh, a few other requirements, but they pitch in both Oklahoma City and Tulsa uh, monthly. And it's not just I2E deals. Sometimes we do some syndicated deals as well. Right now, I have a house buying addiction, so I'm not ready quite yet. But uh, <laughs> one of these days, I'm going to stop yeah. buying houses and go back at that probably. Great. We'd love to have you. It's a great way to see deal flow that's been pre-vetted by I2E. Stacy, can you talk a little bit about uh, over here? Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Can you talk a little bit about um, the investors that are outside Oklahoma and maybe the perception they have with Oklahoma companies um, and how you approach that? Sure. So a lot of our seed step angels, and again, we have a, a VA in Oklahoma City that Kevin Moore, uh, if anybody has any seed step angel questions, he'd be more than happy to answer them, as James said, on the website. So a lot of the angels that see our deals are Oklahomans. So I would say almost exclusively um, that. But we've had other companies that have gone outside the state to raise the capital, or raise capital, and we've had some go out of the Surge Incubator in Houston. Um, we've had some go out to the Valley. Uh, I think that we're upping the stakes as Oklahoma. I think that we're giving ourselves a name and this, uh, you know, One Million Cups and other organizations like it prove that there's some exciting companies coming out of Oklahoma. So I think they're viewed positively. Sometimes when you see the OK, they're like, wait, what? But um, we, we send strong candidates. So I think that's well received. I tend to think of I2E as being high tech focused. Okay. So is the VAP open to all kinds of businesses or pretty much high tech? That is a great question. So what we do first is we fill the class with companies that could be I2E clients. But we have taken some, so say I only have three that I feel that could go on and become I2E clients, but some really just want the uh, type workshop, the VAP, we've taken some that from the beginning, we said, you know, this is not the type of deal that we invest in, but we'd love for you to come through the class. So that's definitely an option. So if you don't think that you fit I2E's kind of high growth, scalable portfolio, but you think that you could benefit from the VAP, we'd love to look over your application and we can get you in on a future class. Anything else? Good question. Stacey, I know it might be difficult because of privacy, but can you talk about some companies that have gone through your program, have had success that you're proud of? Um, and maybe some that didn't really work out? Oh, sure. I've got some that didn't work out. No, I'm joking. Uh, we have both. We have a healthy mix. So sometimes the victories are different. Um, sometimes we, we had a woman that came in and a um, very highly respected financial advisor that wanted cr to create a way to connect um, baby boomers with financial advisors online. And we came in and I said, you know, my parents, they don't know how to work the Internet. Like, they're... They're, they're the baby boomers and, you know, they're the exception to your rule. She came in and said, I have all these friends and all that. So kind of 
changing that market. And I said, the people that don't know how to talk about their finances are my friends, the millennials. We don't have financial advisors. I don't know, you know, Roth and all these words that get confusing and I have to Google them all the time. So we kind of pivoted her market completely in the first class. So she kind of saw the light, I would say, and, and kind of after a few customer calls, your customer will tell you what, if your product is right or if your product is wrong. And so she was doing a few calls, realized that wasn't it, and then kind of pivoted to millennials and had some success in, in that area. Um, some that didn't work out, I think that we get into a scalability issue. When we say, okay, you have 10 people that like this, how are we gonna get 10,000 people to like this? And when we get to those type of issues of the cost of growth and the cost of customer acquisition and the unit value proposition, I think that, um, you know, either way, it's a win. For us, I, my story is I went through the VAP with a company that I had, and my answer was no at the end. We're trying to get to a no go or no-go decision. And mine pointed directly to no-go. And what I2E did is save me two years of spinning my wheels and spending my money and not taking a real job after college and um, told me that basically this wasn't going to work for some flaws that they had found. And that allowed me to move on to other opportunities, and they eventually hired me. So that, that worked out. All okay. right, we've probably got time for one more question. So if you have a question. OK, so I'm not familiar with your company at all. But uh, what type of stuff do you go through in like all of your rolling classes and then after a company gets vetted? So the type of uh, subjects we're covering in the class and sort of thing? Sure, so in-depth customer discovery. I, I think I had a slide that kind of explained it better. Um, yeah, in-depth customer discovery. We do a lot of customer interviews. So if you have quote unquote homework, it's talk to 10 customers. Talk to 10 people that you think will buy your product, ask them these questions and see what they say. We kind of come back to talking about once that's verified, moving on to how do we get our product to that customer, the costs that come with distribution channels, the metrics, how do we tell if we're actually succeeding? Um, there's, you know, in software it's easy to tell. Uh, they have all these metrics that are how many clicks and how many visits and how many signups. And, and in a traditional non-tech company, that's difficult. So we write out some of those metrics. Uh, we try to avoid the vanity metrics. And if someone's going to tell you that you company is ugly or you have an ugly baby, as we say, it's going to be us. We're, we beat on the business. So um, a lot, mostly customer discovery and product market fit, and the financials and things come after, uh, right before the investment decision. All right. Thank you okay, so much, Stacy, for coming out and telling us about ITE. <laughs> really excited about all the growth that's taking place in Tulsa over the last year and what expected growth we can have. Uh, these are all of our presenters for today. I'm just going to go through a few quick announcements. Uh, who here is for the first time? Has anyone raised your hand if you're here for the first time? Awesome. Are you on our newsletter?